You know, a lot of people ask me how I can run a newspaper and still manage to stay so cool and calm. Well, I've got a secret. How do I take stress in my stride? How do I stay cool when it gets complicated? This is my secret. Hey, you're really terrific. It's the brand new Strokematic from Reassuratron, with 16 individually programmed stroke messages tailored to your special needs to give you that somebody loves you feeling all day long. Hey, I really agree with you. So, when the whole world is against you and none of your friends are answering the phone, here's one little guy who always knows what to say. The Strokematic, available now. I love the way you press my button. OK, cut. I have never sunk so low. Take me now, Lord. Death would be promotion. <laughs> right, OK. A lot of nice stuff in that. You've got a really interesting look there. I still think it would help you to establish a better sense of audience rapport if we were to wet the blouse. Forget it and die, lame brain. Ooh. Give me that passion on camera. I've got chills. Come on, girl, let's ravish the public. Ravish yourself, I'm at it. Oh, come on, Linda. It's only going to be on a loop in my uncle's store. A chain of stores? Yeah, and they'll all be placing ads with us. If you'll just do this plug, do you know how much that's worth to us? My ritual humiliation in all surrounding towns and cities? Keep a hold of that thought. <sighs> It's got to be you, Linda. You're a local celebrity. You're a business success. People around here look up to you. But you're working on that, right? Hey, you're doing the right thing. OK. OK. Right, everybody. Let's go again. Take five. Hurry up. We left school two years ago. Let's keep it that way, huh? You can do this. That woman is gonna be yours. One of her stroke. Morning, Spike. Morning, Linda. Don't hang from the light fittings. It won't make you taller. Maybe if you hung on my ankles. Do it again, I'll hang on you all right, and it won't make you taller. Surprised to see me so happy? Well, we're still dating. That's not why I'm happy. That's why I'm surprised. Morning, Linda. Uh, everything we've done on the hospital series has to be rewritten, and I mean immediately. Morning, Julie. I'll get right on there. You know, I woke up with a good feeling about today, boss. That happens sometimes. It's just nature's cruel way of getting out of bed. I woke up just knowing that you would remember my birthday. Of course I do, but it was ages ago, wasn't it? Yes, Linda, quite a while. Right. Almost exactly a while, in fact. Today? Oh. Well, how was I supposed to remember it was today? It's been a year. Sarah, I had a look at your town hall feature. I rewrote it. You haven't got me a present. Five, it's a thought that counts. Six, you didn't think. I didn't get your present. See, it counts. Oh, I can't believe this. Well, oh, don't be childish. I've got a rumor. There's going to be a local telly news item about our old headmaster. Want me to check it out? Yes, of course. Can't you do anything without asking first? Linda's day. You really didn't get me a damn present. What's the point in birthdays? Grow up. Yeah, you got it. Anyway, shouldn't you be at the town hall by now? You're supposed to be doing those interviews. <laughs> I've got half an hour. Thank you for reminding me on a happy occasion of my birthday that I... How did you do it? Happy birthday. 
How? I'm a unique and remarkable woman, Spike. Enjoy it while your lips last. So, which of your minions did you send to buy it for you? It was my choice. Oh, I am impressed. Well, it was a choice between Julie and Sarah, but Sarah's got better taste for that kind of thing. Uh, it's engraved, actually. Oh, yeah? Seven... 30 a.m. It's the new start time for your morning shift. I um, wanted it to be practical, too. Hey, when did you get it on my damn wrist? You think that's clever? Check your underwear. Ooh. I did right? Yeah, you did good. OK, everyone, let's get to it. I woke up with a good feeling about today. Spike, seen Colin? Uh, pray for him, Julie. He's fallen in love with the new school secretary. Smooth, cool, I'm sophisticated. Look, are you sure she hasn't got a boyfriend? Well, there's this guy in a hat who turns up at her house sometimes. He always arrives late and stays overnight. So I think he must be a lodger. Right. This is it. What do I say? Look, even you can't go wrong with hello. <laughs> right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hang on. Sorry. I said that wrong. I didn't mean to say goodbye like that. Right, fine. I mean, don't be alarmed. It's not because I think you're about to die or anything. <laughs> Good. You look really healthy, and I'm sure you have regular checkups, uh, just in case you've got one of those uh, terminal illnesses with no visible symptoms. <laughs> Though who can tell these days, right? I mean, saw a friend of mine once, picture of health. A week later, I went to see him being cremated. <laughs> Not that I'm going to go and see you being cremated, of course, though I would go to your funeral if you suddenly died for any reason. I'd love to. So, how are you? I've got to work to do. What? In your condition? I've really got to go. Sorry, sorry, I'm getting a bit confused. Please. I I'm sorry, I'm making a total mess of this, right? It's just I've been trying to work out a way to meet you. Why? I've just moved in across the street from you. Oh. And may I say, you look even nicer up close than through binoculars. Oh. Oh, well, for a first meeting, I've had a lot worse. She's probably phoning the police. <sighs> yeah, but I remembered not to give my name. Yeah. Could have been a lot worse. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid there's some late breaking news. She knows who I am now. I just have to stop her thinking of me as a psychopath. What are you trying again? Come in. Any tips this time? What should I do? Fix your zipper. You think she'd like that? No, before you go in. Oh, <laughs> right. I don't think I could take any more of this. No mind if I leave. Good luck. Fred? Fred! I seem to have caught my tie. Fred, are you there? Fred? Oh, God. Somebody there? It's me. Oh, sorry if I seemed a bit strange earlier. Are you shy or something? No, no, I'm not shy at all. I, I, I've just got my zipper stuck, that's all. <laughs> so, Janet. I guess you get tired of guys trying a smoothie routine. Thanks. So, all you were trying to do was chat to me up, and you end up half strangled with possible concussion. Rookie mistake. I'm just glad you passed out before you could set yourself on fire. I haven't done that for ages. <laughs> that's better. See, you can make a joke. And that's a better bet with women, Colin. All right. Yeah, I guess it was pretty funny. It was. And I like a guy with a sense of humour. Colin Matthews, what are you doing back here? Trying to chat me up. Oh, my goodness. He hasn't burnt himself, has he? No, not this time. Right then, Colin. 
It's nice to see you, but we have work to get on with. All right. Yes. Um, Colin, you can do a little favour for me, could you? I'd love to. You're not allowed to charge her, Colin. Thank you, Miss Hessop. I just want you to take this to the headmaster for me. He was asking for it earlier. Come. Sir, have you ever considered your need for professional management? Colin, you, you left, surely? Yeah. So what's going on here, then? I'm about to be interviewed. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, Janet, uh, Miss Clark uh, said you wanted this book. No. Saw your interview with the mayor. Would you be interested in endorsing bikini line products? Colin, not now. No, sir, I meant her. I did not ask for that book. Now, would you mind leaving? Well, then, why did she tell me? I have no idea. Now, please. Oh. Oh, it's OK, sir. Just underestimated me sex appeal. You can do that. I'll talk to you later. We can use a double for the close-ups. One of our ex-pupils. Right. Are you ready to go for this now? Uh, yes. When you are. Just be relaxed, pleasant, and show a genuine interest in her. And just be myself. No. She doesn't have to find out about that for a bit. And listen, don't arrive early, OK? Looks too eager. And she might still be getting ready. No. Right. Let's do it. Make way for the love machine. Tell your wife. I'm not married, kid. Move fast while I'm available. What are you doing here? You gave me that note. Oh, it wasn't for you. Janet, it's me. I had trouble getting away. We have to talk. There is no way we can carry on doing it. You're the guy with the hat. <laughs> Don't believe this. This is totally wild stuff city. You're like a headmaster. She's your secretary, and you're her lodger. Oh. The note was for him, right? Colin, wait! Colin, listen to me for a moment, please. Aren't you married? You still work at that... the Junior Gazette, don't you? Why? We've been trying to keep this quiet. Well, it was certainly news to me. That's it, is it? Well, yeah. Did I do it right? Right. Maybe we could get that noise fixed. Mmm, that'd be good. not only has strong moral dimensions, uh, with a potential for an improving effect on some of our more ethically challenged readers, but, boy, would it be just a blast for the sales figures. Oh, you're such a man. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> this thing's playing up. What's she like, the secretary? Gorgeous. Yeah? No, I'm gaining no respect for the man. I'm humbled. Because he's cheating on his wife? You guys are sick. We are sick. His wife's gorgeous, too. <laughs> We're ill. Maybe you guys could take this seriously. Yeah, maybe we could. 
I mean, especially since the paper wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Winters. But Sullivan and Kerr set us up. Yeah, Winters too, you know that. And some of us sitting around this table were headed exactly nowhere before the Junior Gazette. Spike, for instance. Yeah, Fraz, for example. Yeah, those two. Scum! <laughs> Slime. Yeah. Hey, have you met his wife? My tongue was down to my knees. Yeah. Oh, you are slime. I'm slime, he's scum. We are talking about publishing a story that could have a serious effect on someone's career. Yes, someone who's had a serious effect on all of our careers. I can't believe I'm hearing this. You people are talking like wimps. Oh, it's Mr. Six. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy, can't we just leave him alone? Good, spare a thought for his wife, eh? Oh, we do. And it's great, isn't it? Mm. Meeting over, we're not touching this. I can't believe you said that. I bet Linda really fancies you. Oh, <laughs> I bet Julie's crazy about you. Wow, you're really popular. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I've got to go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll just be one minute. When I get back, I've got some serious points on this issue. Is it's just gossip and we don't run gossip. I still say he's an old creep though. Well, maybe, but there's absolutely nothing that makes this story newsworthy. Thank God. Mr. Winters, headmaster of Norbridge High School, is someone who likes a challenge. He's the man in charge of a new national committee who are going to try and teach teenagers to be sensible about love. Simple question. Do you think it's possible? I think it's necessary in the current circumstances more than ever. Teenagers don't like being preached at, though. Why should they listen to you? Because we won't be preaching. And the challenge is to present the idea to young people that commitment and fidelity can be exciting, not just some kind of dismal duty. Yeah, what? So it's tell me it isn't news now. OK, it's news. But Colin is not a reliable source. Preaching without money. We don't have a story till we've got hard information. See, I think it's possible to make being responsible seem like fun, too. Meaning we need a better really source, uh, right? Practice what you don't preach. <laughs> well, yes, it is true. I've, I've been very happily married for, for 20 years. <laughs> Mr. Winters, thank you very much. You. I just had a feeling you might be upset. You know, after all those stories in the press about my heartbreaking split with you-know-who, a lot of people have asked me how I managed to stay so cool and calm. Well, I've got a secret. Cut! We've got to run it, Linda. It's news. It matters. <laughs> Which is why you spent the entire morning grooming the heartbroken Miss Clark for bimbo stardom. Well, that's a very unfeeling thing to say about a wronged and broken woman who just happens to enjoy being photographed in a leotard. Point one. Colin, you do not decide this paper is running a story until you hear from me. Understood? How can we not run it? Our readership are just the type of people that are going to be affected by what this guy says. And they have a right to be told if he's not qualified to be doling out advice. And we have an obligation to tell them in every way we can. Personally, I'm already at concept stage on a pop-up book. He's absolutely right. Well, well, maybe you could help with the pictures. I mean, this is news now. It is relevant. Did anyone notice what he was actually saying last night? As opposed to who was saying it? Some of it was good stuff. Not the point. Not under discussion. Correct. We can't do this. We're talking about bringing that man down. We can't do that. Oh. So we're in newspapers to protect our little pals now, are we? Well, I'm glad you're not my friend. OK, meeting over. Decision? Not yet. Oh, we're printing tonight. Just one more hour. Colin! Yeah? You're coming with me. I can't. I'm supervising Janet's photo shoot and there's a good bit coming. Yeah, there is. And if you don't come now, you'll miss it. So where are we? Linda. Colin. Mr Winters. Who is it, dear? Uh, some pupils. Ex pupils. Um, you sure you won't? Uh... We won't be long. No. I've been uh, following your paper. Of course. 
I was most impressed with your series on the unfairnesses in school funding. I think you probably know why we're here. Concerning my encounter with Colin the other night by way of my uh, television interview, yes? We wondered maybe if you had something you wanted to say. Is there something you want to ask? No. Mm. I would merely like to mention that this matter is a private one. With public implications. Some people would think, anyway. The fact that I've... I've been a fool does not reflect upon my ability as a headmaster or as a member of that committee. I agree with you. Oh. oh. So you're not going to print this, then? I've had a chance to make up my mind based on the facts. You don't think other people are entitled to that? We just print what's news. We don't decide what's good for people to know. If something comes to our attention and it's newsworthy and it's important to our readership, we print it. It has to be that way. Otherwise, we might as well just make up the stories, right? We print the facts. The readers make the judgments. You know what their judgment will be. Actually, nobody does. I know, all right. Then why did you do it, sir? Anything to add, Colin? Uh, no, no. That about covers it. For what it's worth, probably not much. It will be on the front page. But there'll be no showbiz. We won't sensationalise it. Just another news story. And it will be on the streets early tomorrow. I appreciate the advance warning. So what's going to happen then? To you, I mean. I have absolutely no idea. Ugly day. Yeah. Did I do the right thing? No. Well, I'm off too. Want to see me home? It's a rough neighborhood. I've got some work I need to finish. We'll get a taxi. No walking, all right? What the hell do you mean, no? What do you mean? We're bringing a good man down because of some stuff that's none of our business. And he's a friend. It's not as simple as that. Actually, it is. He's a good headmaster. The very least we've done is shoot him in the foot. Because of us, tomorrow, the world is a slightly less good place. And for this, we get paid. If I hold back a story because I think it's not in the public interest, next thing we'll be inventing the news. It matters that doesn't happen. I did right. Did you do good? Yes. No. Get a taxi. <laughs> 